You're watching TechRadar, this is the Huawei P20 Pro. Huawei's latest flagship has a big display, a big battery, big pixel count, and a big price tag too. If you're not familiar with Huawei, you may have issues spending around 800 quid on a phone like this. That's over a thousand dollars. But when you look at the spec sheet of the Huawei P20 Pro and the phone in a bit more detail, you understand it's pretty exceptional. Here's why. To look at, this phone looks really cool, especially in this gradient finish, available in two gradient finishes actually, a kind of pinky hued one and a twilight one, this purple to blue. It's glass back, glass front, curved glass at that. This melds seamlessly into the metal frame, really rich in hand tactility. Down at the base, you've got USB-C, there's a speaker as well, right hand sides where you'll find all the buttons and around the back of the three cameras. This feels premium, it's also IP67 water and dust resistant as well and therefore justifies the price tag from the off. So too does the screen. For the most part, it's a full HD 6.1 inch OLED panel. And yes, it does sport a notch at the top, but it's a smaller notch than that of the iPhone. Less intrusive, you can also hide it really easily and make the area at the top of the display really useful, showcasing notifications and stuff like battery percentage. The display is also incredibly customizable as well. You can change your color temperature or even the perceived resolution so you can save some battery. That said, it isn't perfect. It's at 6.1 inches, not the highest resolution screen around. And if you look really closely, you can start to see the finer details start to fuzz up a little bit, reminiscent of old school OLED displays. Not a big issue, but definitely noticeable for any eagle eyes out there. But generally speaking, both the design and screen come together really well, instantly suggesting that this phone does actually warrant the price tag. Inside the P20 Pro is a 4,000 milliamp battery. That's the same as found on the Mate 10 Pro. And if you saw our Mate 10 Pro review, you will know that it lasts a full day and then some so too does the P20 Pro. Very impressive. And under an hour and a half charging from zero to 100%, fast charging paired with all day battery means you're not gonna get much better than this from anywhere else. The camera is also equally impressive. In fact, probably more impressive because it's the first smartphone camera camera we've seen in ages that actually provides some real ingenuity in the photography department. Around the back you've got three cameras, a combined 68 megapixels and on the front you've got a 24 megapixel sensor. Over 90 combined megapixels, that's huge numbers, but it comes together well. You've got a primary 40 megapixel camera, you've got a secondary 20 megapixel monochrome camera and the third camera is a three times zoom 8 megapixel camera loaded up with optical image stabilization. Huawei combines this really high megapixel count with some smart AI within the camera interface. This really, really intelligently detects the scene you're trying to shoot and optimizes the picture accordingly. Now, if you are really into photography, you might want to switch this off because it does process the images completely, leaving you very little wiggle room for editing afterwards. But if you want a camera to do all the work for you, it is truly exceptional. Automatically blurring the background when it detects you're shooting a portrait picture, What's also very impressive are the low light photography capabilities here. You can hand hold a long exposure shot for up to four seconds without it coming out like a hot mess. This is the specific dedicated night mode. In regular shooting mode though, you can still take decent low light pictures too. And if you go in full manual, get this thing on a tripod, shoot up to 40 megapixel resolution images raw, you can create incredible light trails, star trails, and just general shots that you can then process in Lightroom afterwards. So whether you're a complete novice right through to a full blown professional photographer, there is something here for you. Now I mentioned the main camera's 40 megapixels. The default shooting mode is actually gonna produce 10 megapixel images. It grabs a bunch of pixels, squishes them together, a technique called oversampling, and ends up producing a shot that is better when it comes to noise handling and color balance than the full 40 megapixel images. In our tests, this worked really, really nicely. Video is not quite as impressive as photography. You haven't got stabilization in 4K or in 60 frames per second full HD, but regular full HD video looks really good. And low light performance is solid, if not groundbreaking again, like the photography was. The front camera is also really sweet too. 24 megapixels doesn't overdo it with detail, so shots can still be flattering, 
boring and you can also turn off the beauty mode or minimize it at least so you look less Barbie doll than older Huawei phones make you. Which means that the camera and battery on the Huawei P20 Pro are two of the things that really set it apart from other flagship smartphones on the market. Running with the latest version of Android, Android 8, with the Motion UI 8.1 over the top, it's good in terms of things like security updates and future proofing, but it's also a good user experience. It's generally speaking really stable, really snappy, and the P20 Pro also offers tons of customization options from changing the grid size of your home screen right through to the color temperature of your display, the perceived output resolution, a ton of battery optimization modes under the hood. Huawei's really thought about giving you maximum amount of bang for buck. But in the same breath, that can also be overwhelming. They load it up with a ton of options that may turn off Android purists. And there's also some bloatware on here. Third party applications can be uninstalled, which is excellent. There are the Huawei applications that are hardwired in. The speakers here are excellent. There's all the Atmos tuning on board. It's a stereo type setup. You've got a bottom firing and a front firing speaker. And it's one of the few smartphones I'd be really happy to listen to for a fairly extended period of time with our headphones. What's also good is that the screen, the OLED panel is punchy, vibrant, deep, dark, and you don't see the notch when you're watching a Netflix episode or something because it's just black. And with OLEDs, blacks are so deep that they are virtually unnoticeable. And while the power under the hood, the Kirin 970 processor paired with six gigabytes of RAM isn't totally cutting edge like the Snapdragon 845, it won't benchmark as well, it's still gonna be able to play back every single game that you throw at it. And day-to-day -day tasks will be a doddle for this thing. More importantly, at this time, the 128 gigabytes of storage is ample. And as a result, you'll have plenty of rooms for all of your games, all of your movies, and your music too, not to mention the 4K content and the impressively large 70 plus megabyte raw photos that you'll be shooting on this thing. So wrapping up, the Huawei P20 Pro is easily one of the best smartphones around. It isn't cheap and Huawei doesn't have the brand clout that Samsung got, Apple does. But what you get with this thing is a real enthusiast smartphone that manages to be refined in the process. Not necessarily in every respect, the user interface could do with a little bit of streamlining in areas, but for from an excellent design to an excellent camera, right through to tons of storage on board and ample power, it's all looking good. Some people may grump that there is no 3.5 mm headphone jack and there's no wireless charging, but if you don't see those as imperatives, you can very confidently pick up a P20 Pro. The only choice left to make is which color will you go for? Hopefully you've enjoyed this review of the Huawei P20 Pro. For more on this and other devices, keep it locked to Tech Radar. Thank <laughs> you.